Welcome, welcome to a new episode of Video Car Review, our international branch of Ausfahrt TV. I'm in my hometown Bielefeld again. It's supposed to be summer, but it's quite chilly, 12 degrees Celsius only. But I am uh, happy to present you the facelift or the mid-cycle update of the Alfa Romeo Giulietta in the trim level Veloce. And... Um, for those of you who don't know Ausfahr TV or video car review yet, check the eye above there and you will be guided to a, a little explain video how our format is uh, working and how you get the most out of it. Okay, uh, the Alfa Romeo Giulietta has a pretty neat uh, history. Back in 1954 it was introduced for the first time and built until 1964. In 1977 it had a revival in an all edgy design uh, which was sold until 1985. Well, the recent version of the Alfa Romeo Giulietta was presented in 2000 10 and was a successor of the Alfa Romeo 147. It got a facelift in 2013 and a second one in 2016, so this year, and that's right the car I'm presenting you today. Do we have competitors? Well, plenty. That's the Golf Class, you know, a compact car from the Golf Class, so it has many, many competitors. Well, Alfa Romeo is offering the new Giulietta, well, the Giulietta of the year 2010 and uh, following only with turbocharged engines. We got uh, four petrol engines uh, starting with a 1.4 liter engine uh, with 120, 150 or 170 horses. Then we got the 1.8 liter petrol engine with 240 horses, a 1.6 liter diesel engine with 120 horses and a two two liter diesel, uh, one with 150 and the other one with 175 horses. All the uh, Alfa Giulietta come with front wheel drive and depending on the engine uh, you have a manual six speed or a six speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Alfa Romeo is offering the Giulietta with four different petrol engines, 120, 150, 170 and 240 horses and three diesel engines, 120, 150, 175 horses. We got the strongest petrol engines, a four cylinder 1.8 liter capacity engine with 240 horses and a maximum torque of 340 newton meters at 2000 rpm it's front wheel driven and we got a seven uh, six speed dual clutch automatic transmission let me give you the basic facts about our Alfa Romeo Giulietta Veloce with 240 petrol horses. It accelerates from 0 to 100 km per hour or 62 miles per hour in 6 seconds straight. And the top speed is reached at 244 km per hour or 152 miles per hour. The gas tank of the Alfa Romeo Giulietta will take 60 liters or 15.9 US gallons. Alfa Romeo gives a fuel consumption figure of 6.8 liters for every 100 kilometers driven or 34.6 miles per US gallons. Which means that under perfect conditions you can drive up to 880 kilometers or 400, uh, 540 miles without stopping for fuel. CO2 emissions for the 2016 Alfa Romeo Giulietta 1.8 TBI 16V multi-air should be 157 grams per kilometer according to Alfa Romeo. The Alfa Romeo Giulietta has a length of 4.35 meters or 171 inches with a wheelbase of 2.63 meters or 104 inches. It is 1.47 meters high, so 58 inches, and it is 1.8 meters wide, so 71 inches. For the turning circle, you need at least 10.9 meters or 35.8 feet of free space. The curb weight comes in at 1,395 kilograms or 3,075 pounds. The maximum loaded weight is 1,855 kilograms or 4,090 pounds. In Germany, our test car would cost around about 39,880 euros. <laughs> 
Alfa Romeo is offering the Giulietta with three different trim levels. We got the highest one here called Veloce. And uh, if you want to drive the strongest petrol engine, you have to have the uh, highest uh, trim level as well. Which you recognize, by the way, from the front um, by the carbon look in the headlights. Uh, with the 2016 facelift, uh, Alfa Romeo reshaped the front a little bit. For instance, the Scudetta, so the Alfa Romeo kidney in the front, is almost vertical to the street now, showing, you know, what their uh, ancestors already had. Our test car is equipped with the optional big xenon headlights with LED running lights. You see four LEDs here for simple, uh, single sports. And it comes with a, a dynamic cornering light as well and fog lamps down there. Alfa Romeo Romeo didn't change anything from the side view with the facelift, but since we got the higher, the, the, the most powerful petrol engine and the Veloce trim level, our car is uh, 50 millimeters lower to the ground due to sports suspension with adaptive dampers. Besides that, uh, this gray uh, mirror caps they are part of the Veloce trim level as well as the tainted colors for starting from the uh, B pillar. Um, this color is called Rosso Competizione and it costs extra while you get a red for free. Altogether you have 11 colors you can choose from. Um, with the Veloce we should have 17 inch alloys on here, while the base model by the way stands on 16 inch steel wheels. Um, but we got the optional 18 inch alloys called Potenza. Our car comes with a Brembo performance brake. Uh, you see the red brake calipers here, four pistons work in there and the diameter of the braking discs are 330 millimeters in the front and 278 in the back. Um, we got Pirelli tires on here, P7 with a dimension 225-40R18. Well, Alfa Romeo just slightly uh, remodeled the rear bumper, so the car is presenting itself like the model in, or almost like the model in 2010. So we got a spoiler on the roof here with a third braking light. Uh, we got divided uh, rear lights with LED, you know, this light signature you might know already and like. At least I do. Um, so we got LED lights for the uh, normal light while the turning signal, the rear light and the fog lamps are normal light bulbs. Um, down here we find a diffuser and on each side a big exhaust pipe, a big means 92 millimeters diameter. <laughs> All right, enough about the exterior. Now let's hop inside the car. Uh, the door opens in an 80 degree angle and we have a, even an Alfa Romeo dorsal panel here. Well, we got a sport suspension and sport seats. However, getting in the car is really easy. So is closing the door. All right, sitting inside the uh, Alfa Romeo Giulietta Veloce. So the highest trim level. A sporty trim level and that's how the interior looks like. So we got a, a look-alike carbon application here uh, but checking the materials we find out hard plastic, hard plastic, hard plastic it's just hard plastic everywhere even with the doors this looks uh, pretty nice actually I think uh, but it's hard plastic so is the side and everything else. We got the leather steering wheel, which is by the way a new steering wheel and part of the facelift as well as a, a new infotainment system, Uconnect infotainment system with a 6.5 inch display. So material wise, uh, not so nice. The ceiling is covered with clothes and even on the A pillar we have clothes, but rather on hard plastic as well. Just a little bit of clothes, while here it's rather soft. Um, Talking about ergonomy, uh, we got the infotainment unit here as one block. Next to it, we have some switches. Then we got this uh, three uh, rulers or controls uh, for the air condition, which is really good and easy to use, make really sense. Down here, uh, the connectivity part for the infotainment system and the uh, DNA switch from Alfa Romeo. Um, we got buttons on the steering wheel, two sticks uh, on the steering wheel here, 
or rather three actually. Uh, the, on the right side we got the uh, windscreen wiper front and rear. On the left side, oh by the way, on the right side as well, uh, push button for the board computer. On the right side, uh, turning on the lights, the turning signal and high beams. And down here we got the cruise control switch. Yeah. Um, and some buttons up here to uh, do some setting stuff. Yeah, that's it. Easy to use. Uh, no magic. Everything works fine. And everything is good in reach. The display, by the way, is facing the rear. Uh, talking about space, we are in a compact car. Between my head and the ceiling, I can easily fit my fist. Um, between the seats, we have this much space, but we get sports seats, so the sides are coming out a little bit. And I've driven here with two grown-ups in the front, even with five people in the car. Well, actually, not adults in the rear. And uh, it's okay. You have enough space. No worries. It works fine. It's a compact car and suits the size. All right. Starting out with a normal routine. You cannot adjust the height of the safety belts on your shoulder. And I'm willing to show you the length of the safety belts. I'm sitting on uh, sport seats, the part of the trim level. Uh, you adjust them manually, scoot all the way back, scoot all the way to the front. Find a decent position. You can adjust the height as well manually. And for adjusting the uh, back, you can the backrest you can use a wheel, a little wheel to control this. As an option we got a seat heating, just one intensity. You can reach it easily, it's down here, but you cannot really check if it's on or not. For this you almost have to uh, open the door. Uh, seat heating is fine, starts out slow, but then it's nice and comfortable. Um, I'm not too content with the seats, but it's just me, I guess, because uh, other people has, have driven this car or driven with me. And uh, with my upper back, it does not fit. I mean, I have a strong upper back, so that might be my problem. Other guys said, well, I don't have a problem. It's fine, you know, works good for me. Uh, so you might want to, you know, take a, a longer test drive to check this out for yourself. And another thing, uh, we got uh, alloy pedals here, sporty pedals, they're fine. Uh, but since we have an automatic, you know, I can rest my foot on the left side. And if I do this, my knee has a strange angle, which I don't really like. So I never use this, but put my foot uh, next to it, because this goes down a little bit more. More comfortable for me, at least. I always think uh, if... Um, the Italian brands still use like, you know, not so tall people as a role model for their for their cars. I mean, I'm not tall, you know, I'm 180 centimeters tall, 5'11". So uh, I'm actually the role model for German, but obviously not for an Italian, I guess. Okay, seats, got everything. The steering wheel, you can adjust it manually. That's the radius you have here. It's pretty loud while you do this. Uh, that's the way I like it. Actually, I would enjoy it a little bit more down, but this is not available here. You, that's already the lowest you can put the car. Uh, but if I would put it more down, I would probably not be able to uh, read the cockpit. Yeah. Okay, it's covered with leather. We got red stitching, uh, by the way, as well down here and with a handbrake and on the seats. And as you might see, uh, we got the Alfa Romeo here in uh, silver on the silver application and a red stitching for the Alfa logo on the headrest, headrest which I personally like. Uh, okay. So, it's a multifunctional steering wheel. At least we got uh, buttons on the left as well as on the right. Uh, on the left, uh, mood and control the volume and enable the speech command. On the right side, skip songs, radio stations, whatever, take phone calls and hang up. Um, the control for the uh, cruise control is down here. It's a single stick. 
told you already. And we got shifting pedals on both sides, little plastic pedals. They could be a little bit bigger for my taste. Uh, I can reach them, but it would be easier if they would be a little bit bigger. Made out of plastic and uh, yeah, that's it. So that was the steering wheel, done. Uh, looking in the mirrors, uh, they look much nicer from the outside than looking in the mirror glass. Not really sporty, but I like the shape of the car, so I don't, well, you know, whatever. Uh, they're big enough to see everything what's going on behind. Uh, the inner mirror, however, could be much bigger. Uh, because you have to really, really move your head to see the full window. Besides that, the headrest in the rear on your way, as well as the headrest of the passenger seat. You see this in the mirror as well. Yeah. Uh, turning my head around my shoulder on the left side. Oh, the B pillar is not really a sin, but you don't have a blind spot. Even so, the um, part between the seat, the sports seat and the B pillar is pretty tight. On the other way around, A pillar fine, B pillar fine, even with the sports seat. And we have a blind spot uh, due to the wide uh, C pillar, but you can, you know, use the mirror and you're safe. That's it. Uh, there's no rear camera, not even available, but we got parking sensors and you see them in the display, which I will show you. Let me first fire up the engine for you guys, so you see all the lights. And uh, I'm pretty annoyed by the reflections here that you see right now, you know, my hand. Uh, be aware, I had no problems with, uh, with reflections while driving. So this is just due to whatever, you know, it's just here right now. On the left side, around gauge with a speedometer going up to 260 kilometers per hour, the car runs 244. So that's pretty good. The other way around, we got the RPM meter going up to 8,000 RPM with a red range starting at 6,500 RPM. And in between uh, Benzina, so the gas control or the control for the petrol tank, and Aqua, so the temperature, coolant temperature. Below here, we got the board computer. Uh, on the left side, the current time, current outside temperature, and the current driving program. Right now it's natural and if I push the switch, can put it on sport, you see there's a, a racing flag now. Back to natural, the leaf and uh, down to uh, all weather where we have, um, well, you know, snowflake. Okay. Um, in the main display, we see on the lower um, part par P for park, so that's D for drive uh, later on, and the mileage, overall mileage of the car, and the current date. Here's the reach, um, and I zeroed <laughs> my trip computer by accident, by the way. Uh, I had 825 kilometers on there with a fuel consumption of 13.2 liters. And this is trip B. So, um, yeah, for some reason the values don't fit anymore. So the reach with the tank, uh, distance driven trip A, current, um, current fuel consumption, And I'm just trying if this is uh, working, but no, I need this. Um, so there are rather basic informations. If you put the car in dynamic, uh, you see uh, one different screen. So the pressure of um, of the turbocharger which I don't reach right now because I'm trapped in uh, this dialogue, which you can, you know, you have here controls to do something. Oh, here it is now. So that's the pressure of the turbocharger. Fine. Uh, I'm missing the digital speed, especially since this uh, scale is not like really uh, great and big. Um, I would rather have the digital speed down here, but it's not available. OK, 
Okay, on this side we got the infotainment system, the AS 6.5 inch display from Uconnect, which is new, came with a facelift. So that's the radio. Uh, we got AM, FM, DAB, media, nothing is connected, but you can, you know, choose different sources, USB, Bluetooth, AUX and SD. Here we got the navigation system. I think it's based on TomTom. Tom. Not really sure. Let's have a look at the car. A little bit annoying. You cannot zoom with a ruler here, but you have to really press uh, on the screen the plus and min uh, minus buttons. Uh, my phone is connected. And then we got apps. Uh, for the apps, two different functions, but I like the screen, by the way. You know, the time, big, temperature, compass, and uh, the state of my iPhone. So we got Uconnect Live services, like um, Reuters, Mica, Twitter, and um, Deezer and TuneIn, for instance. And um, here's some screens to drive all efficiently. Makes sense in a sporty car, for sure. And then we got the board computer here as well with the trip stuff. Um, yeah, everything right here. And that's it. I had no problems reading uh, either the display or the cockpit during night and daytime worked fine. And once again, the reflections you see here, me with the camera, I had no problems with that while driving the car. All right, let's turn it off. Uh, we don't have a sunroof. I don't even think there's one available. There's no ambient light in this car. And uh, the button for the warning indicator lights is right here in the center, easy to reach, not to overview. So that's summed up. And the horn sounds like that. And again, back on the driver's seat for the Ausfahr TV slash video car review compartment check. I showed you all the compartments in this car. In the door panels, uh, we hardly have space for this half a liter bottle. It's really tight in there and I really have to push it in. Behind that, I could put my wallet, for instance. On the left, to this, uh, next to the steering wheel, we have a little compartment. I can put my whole fist in here, or at least my whole hand. Uh, inside, there's a rubber uh, uh, button, so it's uh, anti-slip surface, and things won't scoot out there, I think, because the uh, entry is a little bit higher than the button here. Okay, another compartment up here, once again inside anti-slip surface and uh, it's big enough even for my big iPhone to put in here. But I will take it out because otherwise I will forget it in there and I don't want that. Uh, in front of the um, stick for choosing the driving programs we got an SD card reader, a USB port and an AUX in. Uh, behind this uh, stick we have a 12 volt outlet and a real handbrake, you know, for driving fun in winter time. And two cup holders. Well, those cup holders are kind of, you know, the first one is not high enough to hold this bottle, but the second one is. We don't have spacers. We have an anti-slip surface on the bottom. And uh, yeah, I have another bottle here. This is 0.75 liters. I can put this in here, really press it hard in there, which I did on my last drive. Same bottle here. Uh, this works, but then, you know, you really have to pull it out. So it's a strange scale, the whole thing is. Uh, behind that, we have another little compartment, anti-slip, uh, rubber thing again, for coins maybe, or keys. I don't know what to put there. Nothing in the foot compartment, but uh, we do have a gloves compartment. It's really, really deep. I would even say big and deep. So I really have to lean forward to get all this out. It's a board material right here and warning vest. It's illuminated by a little light. Uh, you can cool it down using the cold air of the air condition. And we have a little compartment for glasses here as well. 
in both sun visors we find makeup mirrors they're both illuminated uh, with a little light next to the mirror we have uh, a little rubber band for tickets or whatever we got reading lights for the driver and the passenger both together is the entry light and uh, i don't have a handle here but at least on the passenger side and here i have a display oh no a display to see who's buckled up or who's not buckled up all right we got five doors so let's hop on the rear bench and i can tell you a little bit uh, about space and comfort in there well getting in the rear is not so much fun i have to fold myself a little bit in the car but then it works at least all right i'm sitting on the rear bench now and uh for your information, I'm 180 centimeters tall, so 5'11", and I don't really feel comfortable in here because due to a lack of space for my head, I can um, uh, just put a hand, a flat hand between my head and the ceiling, or the other way around, I can reach the backrest, but you know, if I use the backrest and we are having some potholes, I will hit the ceiling with my head. If I turn my head around to look outside, I'm touching the roof line already, which is not too nice as well. At least I can put my full uh, feet under the uh, front seat, which is lowered already to the lowest position, so that's good. And I have uh, enough space for my legs. This is because the driver or the, the, the front seats are shaped this way that they spared out some of the seats, so you can sit here at least uh, all right. Okay, the material, we got leather, Alcantara combination, like in the front, and hard plastic in the door, just like in the front as well. Okay, uh, we got a little compartment down here, not too much space. There was not space for a bottle in here. Then in the center, we got a little ashtray and one air outlet, one air outlet for all three uh, persons here. Talking about three persons, I will scoot in the middle for you guys. Oh, well, it's really hard to sit here, hard in terms of not hard to sit here, but hard um, back and hard cushion. And even if I put my legs together, my upper legs are over the seats, uh, cushions of the both outer seats. So I don't see three grown-ups here in the rear, at least uh, if they don't like it uh, nice and cozy. Uh, we got Isofix hooks, the locks of the safety belts are stiff so the kids can buckle up themselves with ease. And the length of the safety belt is uh, not so nice. Uh, if you have kids, make sure uh, that still use a child seat, make sure to go to a dealer and buckle up your child seat if this works. I kind of doubt it. Uh, maybe it works, but especially for a baby uh, shelf, this shouldn't be enough. One of these days I will have this, you know, in reach and I can show you everything. Um, we have a handle up here on both sides with a little hook for your jacket. Uh, we have an automatic power driven window, which is not lowering all the way. So this is still staying here. And we have a uh, protection so no one gets hurt if you, you know, lift it up from the front and your kids have your fingers sticking out. Yeah. Uh, then back here we have a light. It's not a reading light, it's just the entry light, just on and off. And we get an armrest for two arms even. You can open it. Here you have a little compartment or two little compartments and uh, a cup holder or bottle holder and here's my half a liter bottle that fits in here and it's not shaking around too much but can't be bigger because there's not more space did i miss anything i don't think so that's it from the rear bench <laughs> Before I show you the trunk, I would like to show you the key, which is 
at least I think so pretty neat. Uh, on the rear there's not much to see but on the front we got the uh, Alfa Romeo Scudetto as well you know with a red background and the Alfa Romeo logo and if you press the logo you get the key outside. So we got three push buttons uh, unlock the car, lock the car and open the trunk. Even if the car is locked you can open the trunk this way. Here you got a, a space for 350 liters or 12 cubic feet and uh, yeah I would just grab my stuff out carry on luggage equipment bag and my mighty tripod case fits in here as well that's pretty neat so uh, let's look around well first of all as you might have seen i have to lift the stuff up and goes up here as well a little bit so first if we load stuff in the car we have to lift it up 78 centimeters so 30.5 inches and then it goes down 33 centimeters so nine inches and by the way the lid opens to a height of 210 centimeters, so almost 83 inches. But now have a look inside here. So that's the empty trunk. This is the first aid kit, you know, and we can pop it everywhere actually, wherever we want to. So here's a warning triangle, warning vest and first aid kit. Um, well, I will put it up here again because we can lift up the floor and uh, lift it up again. So here we got the tire fit, uh, subwoofer from the Bose system and the hook for, you know, whenever you have something that you don't want to have and even some space for little stuff. Besides that, we got four rings here. One, two, three, four to tie up stuff. On the left side we have a little compartment, that's my measuring tape, a 12 volt outlet and a little light to illuminate the trunk. On the other side one hook for um, a bag or so. Now let's remove the thing here. It looks like paper sort of, you know, pressed, whatever. And um, we can flip the rear seats one oh one third falls on the um right side there's a little grip here and the other two third on the left side once you have flipped the rear bench you have a storage volume in here of 1518 liters or 54 cubic feet and um, I will measure everything for you, of course. Between the wheel arches, we have 101 centimeters, so almost 40 inches. And uh, the depth in here is um, well, almost 70 centimeters, so 27.5 inches. Um, to the flipped rear bench we have 130 centimeters so 51 inches and if you push the passenger seat to the very front you have uh, 170 centimeters so 67 inches yeah 67 inches oh and the height is um, up to the you know protection here 50 centimeters and up to the ceiling 77 centimeters that's 30 inches and 50 centimeters that's uh, almost 20 inches you can load up to 460 kilograms inside the alpha of which uh, 50 kilograms can go on the roof which means uh, 1014 pounds inside uh, of which 110 pounds on the roof. As an option you can even install a hook and pull trailers up to a weight of one metric ton if they have their own braking system otherwise you're limited to 500 kilograms. <laughs> Oh.
All right, guys, I'm ready to hit the autobahn here. I'm uh, right now in dynamic. I will tell you a little bit more about the driving modes. 80, 100, 120, 140, 140, I had to slow down, 160, 180, two, no, 190, 200, 210, 220, and now I have to hit the brakes because of slower traffic. Well, I will accelerate a little bit later again, or at least try to. So, we got different driving modes here in the uh, Giulietta Veloce, going in dynamic. If I pull the switch for a little time, I go to natural, which is normal, I guess. And once again, to all weather, where it's supposed, where you have to, supposed to have more traction. Uh, all weather here with a blue light, normal with a light, uh, white light, and um, dynamic with an orange light. Um, if you switch the driving modes, it affects the whole powertrain with transmission and engine, the suspension, the steering, and uh, even the brakes. So, uh, but not the sound. The sound is always the same, regardless which mode you're in. You have a little connections between the engine room and the uh, where we are sit here, and that is uh, giving you some more sound, especially around uh, 5,000 RPM. The car gets really loud. As you hear, I raise my voice, and. Um, this is nice, a BMW coming from the back. You will push this uh, Passat away for me. So, um, acceleration is great. You have 240 horses, the car runs fine. Well, around 200, it gets a little bit slower, but this is fine. 240 horses, this is fine for sure. So, let's accelerate again. I'm going 130, full throttle, four gear. 160, 180, 5th gear, 190, 200, 210, 220, 230, oh, and he hits the brakes, too bad, but almost top speed, uh, I can tell you, now 170 you hear the wind noises but if I slow down quite a bit driving 140 kilometers per hour you hardly hear wind noises they're there a little bit but they're not the problem the problem is really the engine noise yes it is a sporty car and you want it this way but I would really appreciate a push button somewhere to reduce the noise level, you know. If you're just like hanging out with your friends, cruising somewhere or driving somewhere or even rushing somewhere, you know, it would be neat to have a less um, noisy car. All right, I'm hitting a traffic jam now. Well, that's awesome. I can tell you at least um, that the steering even if I can't show it really now, uh, is direct and supports uh, fast cornering. If you're driving in uh, dynamic, it reacts suddenly. You don't have anything in the middle where it's not reacting. So it uses every movement of the steering wheel just at once. Well, if you go in normal, you have at least this part in the middle where nothing is happening, so you're more relaxed while driving. Uh, talking about the suspension, um, and I'm really sorry guys, but I have to get back to the office and I can't take another circle, especially with a traffic jam again. Um, the suspension, we have adaptive dampers here. In sport, you get uh, good feedback from the suspension. You feel the street, but it's not too uncomfortable overall. It is stiff, yes, but not like, you know, jumping around like a rabbit or something. So that's that's neat. And then going back in normal, 
it's even almost comfortable. Yes, you still feel a little bit of stiffness, the sportiness of the suspension, which I don't mind, but the rest is just fine and uh, works good. Um, told you a little bit about the Brembo performance brakes. I can tell you here that they work fine. I uh, like two or three times on the Autobahn where I had to, you know, slow down immediately. They worked fine. Car was still going straight, no fussing around. And um, once you put your foot on the pedal and tenderly press it, you feel the pressure of the brake. So it gives you a good feedback as well. We got a, a six-speed uh, dual-clutch automatic transmission here. I can either use the pedals to shift or uh, push the stick to the side, to the left side, and then go up and down. Regardless what you do, both ways, if you go into a manual, uh, when you reach the limit, so the RPM limit, it shifts for you. So it's not like a full manual part. You know, some sport car supports full manual mode, which just staying uh, on the red edge of the RPM meter uh, while you, you know, don't shift. But here it shifts by itself. But the shifting, you know, once you press a pedal, it works fine, shifts down and up just at once, regardless which uh, way you use to shift here. While talking about assist systems, this is a short one, we don't have any. Um, we have the big Uconnect infotainment system in here with navigation system. In Germany it's 1650 euros extra. Plus we got the Bose sound system, 500 watts for 770 euros extra. Um, the sound system is okay. It's not like awesome, great, wow, but it's fine. For me it's a little bit too much bus in it you know okay you can put it out but in the normal setting too much bus but then again you know since the car is pretty loud I appreciated the bus because otherwise you wouldn't hardly hear the music but you can turn it up uh, a bunch or a whole lot and uh, still enjoy your music just it's not very how you call it sophisticated or whatever <laughs> That's it. That's the end of my review about the Alfa Romeo Giulietta Veloce. First of all, fuel consumption. Alfa says, well, you know, in this NEFZ cyclers, you can uh, drive 100 kilometers and just need 6.8 liters of fuel. Well, I've driven this car now uh, 825 kilometers, quite sporty, I might say, and I have an average fuel consumption of 13.2 liters. Yay! But I think if you buy this car and you use it the way it's supposed to be, then you have to think about, you know, you having, having a fuel consumption of at least 13 liters. I think you can drive it with 10 as well, but then you're not like the sporty guy. All right, uh, driving fun, both thumbs up. I like the sound, even so it's artificial and you cannot, you know, stop it. It's a little bit loud, but the sound is great. The suspension is great with the adaptive dampers. It's just fun. Uh, power is there when you need it. All in all, a very fun car. Uh, usage as a daily driver. Well, you have limited space for grown-ups in the rear, but they can still sit there. You have a trunk with 350 liters, um, which is fine. And uh, all in all, yes, you can use it as a daily driver. Um, driving comfort, I might say, uh, the suspension is fine. In normal, you know, you don't feel every uh, little gravel on the road, so that's fine. In sport, it gets sporty so, uh, and, and you can drive. <laughs> to drive was fun. Well, I'm sorry, I just got lost. No, the suspension. In normal, it's quite comfortable. Not comfortable in a, like, a, like a sedan, sort of, but for the sporty car, it is comfortable. I didn't like the seats too much with my back. For some reason, I had other people sitting in here, they said, well, they're fine, I like them. So uh, you might want to find out yourself. Um, 
but the sound itself is really loud and especially if you drive on a highway on an autobahn and you have people sitting in the rear and you want to have a conversation then you're lost because they hardly hear you uh, i've read in some forums that you can disable this connection uh, manually so but then it's disabled and you don't have the sound anymore it would be neat to have a switch to say well today i have my sporty day you know blast it all up and the other days i just want to drive silently yeah that's it if you like my review please give me a thumb up if you have any questions please put them below in the comment field three marks as well i'm interested in what you think about this car my name is mr z at least i call myself this way and you know why if you got here <laughs> okay so long and goodbye guys